Welcome everyone. We thought it would be really helpful to uh, students and to parents and carers if we put a, a short video together to talk about some of the uh, procedures that we're putting in place and have had in place previously just to remind people of the things that, that children will expect when they come back to us. So I'm Miss Mason, Head of School, and I'm joined by Mrs Baird, uh, Assistant Head Teacher, and we'll be talking about some of the, the procedures for coming back, how we're going to manage that as safely as possible, and some of the other questions that we've had from students and try to cover everything. If you have further questions, there'll be information at the end of this session for you to be able to um, ask those to us. So uh, for in terms of student return, then the 8th of March is the date in which the government have said all children will return to school. Obviously, in secondary schools, that involves a comprehensive set of three tests, lateral flow tests, to ensure that there's an additional safety measure in place so that children can come back to school um, really safely. So on the table that you can see on the screen now, it shows the year group on the left, the date of the test that they will have, their first test, and then once they've had their first test, they will go to the test centre, they will get their test, they will go home on that day, and then the following day, assuming they've had a negative test, they will return to school. If they have a positive test, then they will be required to self-isolate for 10 days. The key worker school will not run from the week commencing the 8th of March, and that allows us then to set up not only for student return, but also to break the bubble in which the year 10s and 11s would have been in, so that they've got at least three days between starting back with their, their bubble that they were in in their year group before. As it says on the screen, and as I've just mentioned, attendance is mandatory. Obviously, there's a phased return because we can't get all children into school on the 8th of March, having all had a test. So logistically, it means that secondary schools are phasing in and we're trying to phase that in as quickly as possible. So we have started our testing program on Thursday, the 4th of March, even though we can't have children in for face to face teaching on the until the 8th of March. But it does mean that we get more children in more quickly and we get a quicker start to the learning. So testing arrangements. So this is the front of our school site in the picture and entrance will be through this main gate. There will be members of staff at the gate directing children through and they will have a designated area for them to line up on the courtyard. Once they're on the courtyard, we will check whether they've got consent to be tested. If we don't have consent at that point, we will make a phone call home to check whether or not you are happy for your children to be tested. Children will not be excluded from education if they do not wish to be tested, although it is strongly recommended. In terms of the test site itself, so our sports hall is the test centre, so students will be taken around to the test centre and will make need to make sure that in this area here outside the entrance that they are socially distancing. Obviously, at this point, they won't know if they're going to get a negative or a positive test. So we need to make sure at all times that the children are socially distancing between each other and particularly the adults that will be conducting the tests and transferring them through into the test centre. So when you get to the sports hall, you will see that uh, there's lots of signs up about how to, to enter, making sure that you're socially distancing and so on. You'll come through into the reception area and you'll pick up one of these cards. So these cards here are the registration cards. Children pick those up. There'll be a barcode which will be stuck onto this test and the registration information that you will have filled in through the consent process will have already been uploaded or you can do that at home. So that should then take you through into the test centre once the registration process has been completed. Students will sanitise their hands on the way in and will be required to wear a mask at all times until they get into the test centre and are asked to remove it. When students go through into the test centre, there will be staff at each bay. So there are testing bays and processing bays behind. The testing bays will be the areas where the children will stand. So the children will have 
uh, a mirror to be able to conduct the test and, and see what they're doing. And the test assistants will be uh, directing the children to uh, perform the test in a safe way and as accurately as possible. The test assistant will then take the swab from the child and it will go into a, a little vial that means that the testing process then is, is completed and processed and within 30 minutes that test result will be returned. You will get a notification about that via text message or email, whichever way, uh, whichever type of information you have provided during the registration process. Please be advised that if your child has had a lateral flow test or a PCR test that has tested positive for COVID in the last 90 days, then they will not require to do the lateral flow testing process in school. They can do the lateral flow testing process, but we would advise not to because if they do sometimes have that um, residual viral load left, it can trigger a positive test and in which case they will still be required to self isolate for 10 days. So it's, it's normal for 90 days to be a, an exemption of doing that lateral flow process. There's a one way system within the test centre. So at the back of the sports hall test centre, there's an exit. So students will walk through the test centre once they've completed their test, come out through the back of the sports hall and come back through the front main gate. Uh, we'd ask students to go directly home, please, not to visit shops, not to visit other people, not to congregate in groups outside of the school gates. It's still really important. We are in a national lockdown and it's important that children don't congregate at all and don't socialise outside of the school gates or on their way home. I'll hand over now to Mrs Baird, who will go through the, the school day and things that we will talk to the students about while we are in school. Hi, so most of the slides that I'm going to go through are just a reminder for you. Um, we haven't changed a huge amount in school. Um, just a point to pick up from the last slide. When students are coming in for their testing, they are not required to be wearing a school uniform. But when they come back in for their first full day back in school, we would expect them to then be back in full school uniform. So just a reminder of the school day timing. So if your child is in key stage three, so that is year seven, eight or nine, they need to be on the school site for 8.40 and they line up on their courtyard where they will be collected by their form tutor for registration. Please don't come any earlier than that because it makes it difficult for us to maintain our bubbles between key stage three and key stage four. If you are in key stage four, however, so that, or five, so that's 10, 11, 12 and 13, students should arrive from um, 4, 8.30 and go straight to form. Form will start for those students at 8.30, so they must be in their classrooms by that point. On the slide, you can then see the normal school day. Um, and the final point to bring to your attention is the end of the school day. So school will end uh, period five for key stage three, so seven, eight and nine at 2.45. It will finish for years 10, 11, 12 and 13 at 2.55. And that's to ensure that we can keep the bubbles separate as they exit the building. We will insist that students don't gather at the bikes or gates in the morning or the evening. So once they've been dismissed from class, they must leave the site immediately. In the first week back, form tutors will play a large role in reassuring your child and welcoming them back in school. Our absolute priority is to welcome your child back reassure them that it's OK, uh, that everyone in the country has been through exactly the same situation that we've just been through. And actually, as a school at Chase Terrace, with the live learning we've produced and, and the lessons that have been taking place, we're actually in a brilliant position uh, to calm those nerves, uh, answer any questions or queries that students have and make sure that the students are OK. That will be the major role for form tutors and the rest of our staff in the first few weeks back. We will be doing face mask checks every morning. It's vital that your child comes to school with a face mask. They will need to wear it at all times now inside the building unless they are medically exempt. Um, 
Form tutors will check every morning and where needed, we can provide your child with a face mask if for some reason they've forgotten it or it's broken. But we will be keeping a log of that. Obviously, it, it costs the school quite a lot of money to be providing face masks every day to students. Um, so we will be asking please that, that children come with face masks from home. The classroom entry and exit system remains the same as the last lockdown. So that is that students need to hand sanitise on entry and exit from each classroom. They have to make sure that they sit in their seating plan and follow all directions from the member of staff. The most important thing being that they keep their social distance from their peers and most importantly from the adult in the classroom. The one way system remains in place and we haven't made any changes to that and the markings are still on the floor and the corridors and students must make sure that they use that one way system at all times. Students need to make sure they carefully check their timetables, particularly for PE lessons, as on days where students have PE, they will come to school in their full PE kit. And I'll go through that in a moment. On all other days, full uniform is expected. So just a breakdown to remind students of break and lunchtime arrangements. Um, all students now have different courtyards and break and lunch times are staggered between key stages to maintain the bubbles. Students are only permitted on their courtyard at break and lunch time. They should not be in the building and they should not be visiting other courtyards. There'll be no tables or chairs still available in the dining room and all food will still be served in takeaway containers so that students can go and eat at their allocated courtyard area. Obviously, where we have wet breaks or lunches or other weather that requires students to be inside, arrangements will be made for that and students will have it in classrooms. But we would ask that you send your child with a, a sensible coat and jumper because it is chilly and students will be outside at break and lunch. Classroom protocol again has not changed significantly. It will continue to be that there is no queuing in corridors. Students must move quietly and sensible to their next lesson. And as soon as the member of staff greets them at the door, they should go in and take their seat. They must use the hand sanitizer on entry to the classroom and they do not need to take a tissue. Any items that have been used by the student during the lesson must be disposed of in the pedal bin. Students must sit in their designated seat the seating plans are essential for us to support with contact tracing if needed. Uh, any problems the student has with a seating plan, they need to speak to the member of staff at the end of the lesson, but they will be advised to sit in the seat they have been allocated for that lesson. Rooms will remain organised as they were previously with desks facing the front and there should be no sharing of equipment as much as possible. Uh, any equipment that has been used in class will be isolated and cleaned after use, but students should not be sharing pens, pencils, etc. Please make sure your child comes to school with all of the equipment they will need. Bags and coats during lessons will need to be stored under desks or out of the way in lockers. But they must stay with the student. They can't put those elsewhere in the school, not in staff cupboards or on the sides in classrooms. The staff zone at the front of the classroom is still in place and as much as possible staff will be staying behind that line. There has been a big change in that the government now strongly advises the wearing of face masks by all at all times inside the building. Uh, that includes classrooms. That is a change from the previous guidance, which was that they should be worn in communal areas such as corridors. So we will be asking students now to wear face masks at all times inside the building, including classrooms. This guidance is to be reviewed at Easter in line with government guidelines. We would ask that students do their utmost to ensure that they give staff adequate space when they're in the classroom. We know that sometimes it will be necessary to move around the room in, in collaboration with the member of staff when allowed, but they must make sure they are maintaining social distance as they're doing this. The site changes are the same as they were previously, so we would ask that all parking is in the main car park. The Witch Elm car park is now used as a courtyard for students, so parents cannot park there. You can only use the main car park for um, parking. Hand sanitizer stations are still in place on entry at all points into the building and should be used. 
Doors and windows will be kept open during lessons, which is why it's vital that students have a jumper with them, school appropriate jumper on their blazer. The one way system is still in place in the corridors and we are still aiming to reduce the number of students moving around the corridors with staggered lesson times. The wearing of masks is required at all times and less exempt. Um, we are asking that rooms students do their best to support staff in keeping rooms as clear and tidy as possible to allow for deep cleans to take place each day. PE and practical lessons. We know that these are crucial for your student to take for your child, sorry, to take part in as soon as they come back. This will be what they've possibly missed out on the most. Students should attend school in their PE kit on days where they have PE. They will not be required to wear masks during their PE lessons. Where the weather is cold or wet, they may wear additional plain navy or black jogging bottoms. But that is in addition to their normal kit and shorts must be worn underneath. Girls who are uh, wearing leggings must wear their shorts over the top. Hoodies with logos are still not permitted unless they are school hoodies. Where we can, we will aim to reintroduce practical lessons in other subjects, but this will be dependent upon um, staff safety and availability. We're still aiming to limit as much as possible the number of external visitors on our site. Um, and you may find that rather than offering you a face to face meeting, you will be now offered a remote meeting via Teams. We would ask that parents do not attend site unless you have an appointment. Please phone the school beforehand, ask to make an appointment with the relevant person and someone will get back to you. We'd also ask to keep our reception staff um, safe, that you do not bring items into school to be dropped off at reception for students. We recognise that for some of our students, they may still need to be isolating or should there be a positive case, they may need to isolate. And as much as possible, we hope to continue with our remote learning. So if your child is off where possible and as soon as possible, we will invite your child to attend lessons remotely via Teams. This will not always be possible. It will depend upon the lesson and the work being done in that lesson in that class. And it won't always be possible on the first day that your child is off as the member of staff won't have been expecting that, so arrangements won't be in place. In those cases, work will be set for your child on Show My Homework or emailed directly to them at their school email address. And it could be that that's a PowerPoint or a link to National Oak Academy. In the first instance, students should access work for their year group at Oak National Academy and the link for that website is below. We have a couple of upcoming events at school. So on Monday 22nd of March, we have Year 12 Parents Evening and Monday 29th of March, Year 10 Parents Evening. Both of these events are planned to go ahead remotely. So in terms of assessments and exams, we're currently working on the guidance that was released yesterday on Thursday. Uh, that from the government and from Ofqual, we expect that the exam boards will provide us with their own clarification on their requirements by Easter. Each exam board will have their own criteria and we'll have to work to this specific, we will have to work to it specifically. So students will be told which pieces of work or which assessments will be used to decide their final grade, but we will not be able to share what that grade is that's been submitted until the results day. Results days have been confirmed this year as being Tuesday the 10th of August for A-level or level three courses and Thursday the 12th of August for GCSE and level two courses. Obviously, there's still a lot more information to come on assessments and exams and the actual process which will be used and the assessment um, structure that we'll need to use is still being developed. But as soon as we have more information, we will contact you and our year 11 and 13 students. We understand how anxious this time is for them particularly and how, how much disruption they faced. So please do be reassured that we do have them at the forefront of our thinking um, at this point in time. If you have any additional questions, please contact your relevant year team or uh, email us at office at chaseterraceacademy.co.uk and put in the subject line return to school query. That allows us to be able to triage any questions and to be able to um, make sure that you get answers really quickly. 
just to, to finally say a big thank you to everyone um, for your support. We know that the, the certain changes, for example, the changes to, to masks, that they're big changes for our children and we want to make sure that we get them in as safely as possible. We will do as much as we can to reassure the children. We will make sure that they're safe and happy and well uh, when they're in the building because we know that that makes the best learning environment. If you have any um, worries, anything specific, like I say, please do get in touch as soon as possible and we'll support as much as we possibly can. For now, thank you very much and I hope to see everyone soon. We are certainly all really excited to see your children back in school. Take care.